finding out what's going on off our campus okay. versus on our campus. Um, so they want to engage with Michael. We'll have a little Q&A after between the two. Um, we are seeking you champions and I'll let Tracy maybe yeah. on because that's sort of and her academic world. Okay. But nice. Sorry, yeah. It's great because I see some new faces. I've, inter you know, I've met a couple of you as we were talking. So I'd like to go around and maybe have some introductions. But I know that some of you are from the um, Letters of Arts and Sciences, the College of Letters and Arts and Sciences. And um, I'm not sure which other colleges are represented. But we are seeking ethics fellows at UCCS um, right now, the deadline is March 10, and I believe today is what? 8. Eight? Eight. So that's two days. <laughs> so if you haven't been, you know, notified, it has to be a full-time, either um, non-tenure track or tenure track. It has to be full-time. Um, but anyway, it, it is a, it's a really nice program where we recognize the efforts to kind of like decide what to do, like a project as far as maybe putting ethics in a class or something like that. Um, and it's a lot of fun. One of the other things, and I notice we don't have any of our fellows here right now because I'm sure they're teaching and, and holding exams, but um, once a fellow, always a fellow. And um, we have moved the fellows program out to the Southern Colorado schools. There's nine schools that are in the Southern Colorado Higher Education Consortium. Um, Warren is, is one of the ethics champions from Pikes Peak, and Michael and Corey are um, from their respective colleges. What they don't know is even if somebody invites um, or somebody else is nominated, because we're in the process of doing it, um, they're also going to be an ethics champion forever. Um, because they're immortalized on our website. And Regina, Regina is... Um, immortalized? Is that so? <laughs> yes, that's so. You are, you are, you are immortalized as an ethics champion. Yeah, we can immortalize it. So um, with that, let's, let's get some introductions. Let's start over here, probably. Well, I'll, this is Michael. We'll introduce him in just a moment. For me. I'm Liz Moore. I'm the program manager for the Danis Fund Ethics Initiative at UCCS. Joanna Weaver from the University of Communications and Media Relations Office. I'm Lynnae George. I'm, from, I'm an adjunct from the Mechanical and Aerospace Engineering Department. Uh, my name is Corey Pagano. I'm from Modulist College. Uh, I teach management and cross culture management. I'm Dallas Strong, and I work in the Department of Leadership Research and Foundation. I'm Kathy Claiborne. I'm the interim dean of the Business. I'm Joan Gagater. I am an instructor in chemistry. Eric Hansen, I do philosophy at LAS. David Lee, teach creativity in the College of Business. Warren Munich, economics and entrepreneurship faculty at Pikes Peak Community College. I'm Nicole Tuck, and I am the development officer that uh, supports the College of Business. Yeah, and Regina? Hi, I'm Regina from the School of Public Affairs. Hi, Regina. <laughs> <laughs> And let's start off with our first guest speaker today. This is Michael Vieret, um, from the School of Business of Western State Colorado University. And we love making road trips to his place. <laughs> it depends on the time of the year. It depends on the time of the year. They had so much snow, they got trapped. Oh, but we're hoping that we'll have future opportunities coming down the road. So I'll let Michael take it from here. Thank you. Thank you very much. Glad to be here. Good morning, everybody. Uh, came down yesterday, and we had some hail. We always have this uh, Saturday was our commencement, and we know it snows one more time <laughs> on commencement. So it normally starts with sun, and then the storm blows in. But we made it through commencement, and it started five minutes after. So uh, somebody put in a good word for us. Uh, I'm in the School of Business. I teach mostly resort management and global business in the uh, school. And the model is eleva education elevated, so we call this ethics elevated as a introduction of ethics. Not really a new, obviously ethics has been taught at Western, but since we have been involved, or since we became involved in this uh, consortium, uh, it has taken a new focus, has taken a new spin, and I would like to share with you what we plan 
on doing starting in fall semester of this, this year. So the, all of what I'm talking about is reflection on what we've been doing, going through the process and looking at what we're doing, and then also uh, starting some new, I think, exciting uh, programs at Western in the realm of ethics. Uh, just to give you a little bit of an overview of what we have been doing in ethics prior to our getting involved last year, really not true, I was here in May for the one with the, yeah. uh, uh, the, drones. Uh, the drones and the ethics, so that was my first taste and I was really excited. First I was like, drones and ethics, what can be in that topic? But it was really exciting also the, the topics of sports and ethics. So I guess I just looked at what we offer right now or before August 2016. And we have philosophy 101, which is your typical intro class to ethics. I think that's pretty standard on most uh, campuses. The GE course so by design it has to transfer across Colorado uh, state schools. Then in philosophy we have a 335 that builds on that ethics 101 course and the examination of influential moral philosophers, application of ethical theories to current global issues. So that takes ethics a little bit further. Then in environmental studies, they have a 400 level senior course in ethics, and obviously they focus on environmental application of ethics. And uh, you can easily see how ethics and environmental policy obviously go, uh, you know, not hand in hand, but it applies quite a bit. And then the Recreation and Outdoor Education Department, ROE, has also a capstone course uh, in Recreation Philosophy and Ethics, and, prepare, and they try to prepare their majors for the ethical challenges of the 21st century. So this is a little bit what goes on on campus outside of the business school, the ethics course. It's just, you know, I'm not an expert in all the other departments, so I went through the department saying, so, you know, what are they doing? in ethics. If you look at the School of Business uh, prior August 2016, we have a basic 300 level course in ethics. Sorry, am I right in America? <laughs> uh, 300 business ethics course uh, that uh, most emphases students have to take. That means we have a basic uh, program in business and then the students specialize for their last courses. And the uh, business 300 is pretty much a required for almost every business uh, student in the, in the School of Business. Then the accounting department has its own capstone, accounting ethics course of 498 capstone. So every accounting student has to take this final year ethics course. And again, uh, driven by some of the scandals we have, they found it uh, and thought it was really important that every accounting student that goes out. And Western has a very strong accounting <coughs> department places their accounting students pretty well in Colorado. So they have this one. The other thing, obviously, most accounting business economics courses within the school deal with ethics as well. I mean, it's not like nobody else talks about ethics. So within different courses, people also cover ethical issues that are specific to the field that they talk to. So if you take an HR course or an OB course, there are aspects, obviously, of ethics in those courses as well. So anyway, so I just looked at that, what's going on, uh, status quo, basically, in August 2016. Uh, the process then is the Western joined the Southern Colorado Higher Learning Consortium in spring, and I got one of those invitations from the president that you don't turn down, right? I mean, there's some politics where, uh, Michael, you will like to do this, and I said, well, yes, sir, I would like to do this. I had no idea, but you know how the situation's, right? I mean, that's how it works, and you don't turn down your president uh, if you don't have a really serious reason for not to. Anyway, uh, so I was asked to do this, and uh, the president wanted to take the School of Business to take the lead on this, uh, but also one of his things was that he wanted to be all-inclusive, he wanted to have it interdisciplinary on campus, so not to just say, oh, you guys in business do it, and then uh, leave it like this. Then I, in August last year, I came up here. We had the orientation for the champions, and we uh, got basically set and charged for the year. And then in October 2016, I got the ethics topic on the School of Business agenda uh, as an official discussion aspect within the, the faculty meeting. 
Uh, and what was pretty much resolved in that meeting was that every faculty member uh, is reviewing his or her course that they teach and look at ethics. There was, uh, our faculty, probably not different than yours, is pretty independent minded. I mean, it comes with their location in Gunnison. People tend to be very independent, so something forced by the dean was not perceived very well. But everybody was clear that it is an important topic that they like to engage, but they wanted to have the freedom to review their syllabi, look at possible changes, and then come up with changes in that. I mean, it's, uh, I guess faculty is everywhere the same. I mean, you, you try to enforce something or force something down, they normally resist. Uh, proposal was then, uh, 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 I made a proposal and it was accepted for an interdisciplinary ethics course offered first to the honors program. So what, again, the president wanted interdisciplinary work, the dean supported that, and so in that faculty meeting, instead of starting with a business course, we actually said, well, where can we create a course or where can we offer a course that is really in interdisciplinary? And we wrote a proposal for an honors course on campus to offer this kind of interdisciplinary ethics course. And that was supported then by uh, the School of Business. You know it's all about FTEs. Uh, if you're in administration and the business school, then uh, 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 assign one full FTE for the teaching of ethics in this honors program. Uh, the other one is then uh, the faculty also debated uh, every department, every school on campus offers a topic in our freshman Headwaters 100 course. It's a first year experience course and what the department said, well we should also create an ethics course. Well, we means I was supposed to. So <laughs> they were a lot easier telling, you know, if you want to do it, you know, we're good with this. You know, if we have to participate, well, we'll see about this. Anyway, so we have an interdisciplinary freshman course offered and we call all these courses headwaters because Gunnison is at the headwaters of most other major rivers going west. And so it's a kind of a course for beginning off. And the topics that are taught in that course range from, I don't know, philosophy to uh, very practical courses, excursions into the, the mountains and uh, 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 seminars on place and history. But it all has to do with the beginning of something, the headwaters of a river, headwaters of a career within the, uh, in the freshman year. So anyway, so those are the two courses that were proposed and accepted uh, by the faculty in October in that meeting. And the way that honors courses work at Western is that the students vote on courses. I don't know whether you have the same aspect here. The faculty, so I wrote a syllabus, I wrote, wrote a proposal, a course description, and that was then placed in front of the students, and there was a November 2016 vote, and there's a whole catalog of courses that people propose, and then the students vote on which courses they would like to see offered and which were not. So, uh, I don't know whether they, for whatever reason, they thought Honor 397, which is giving voice to values proposed by students. Uh, for the fall was voted in by the students as a course. So uh, I think that speaks for the students that they think ethics is important enough, of course, that they on their own voted for that course to go. And again, the business school frees one full-time FTE to teaching this course. And again, as administrators, you know always about the FTEs. That's a big fight uh, for FTEs in, within the departments and so on. Uh, then we had in 2016, we had three teams come up here to participate. The excitement about the students was really great. I mean, the students were very excited. And my students call that stoked. I'm kind of old fashioned, but if I want to be with it, they, they, they were stoked <laughs> about this. And uh, uh, really enjoyed the participation, and they're already planning for next year because they are like, well, we learned this and we learned that. And, Next year will be ready. And I said, like, good. So uh, the word is out. <laughs> yes, you know, I'm sure your students were really excited. And uh, we had three faculty members also come with a group just to, you know, first time you want to learn and, and see. And so there's quite excitement about, again, the talk is already 
especially those students who are not graduating yet, it's like, oh yeah, we'll be there next year. And well, we'll do it this way. It's a learning curve, and clearly. But the excitement is the important part. I mean, the students are really excited about this. And then uh, in December 2016, again, uh, the First Year Experience Council, which is the group of faculty that selects courses for that first year experience, voted to have an ethics course. And it's a little uh, different. It's an ethics pitfalls of academic life. Uh, we find that a lot of our freshmen have no clue what are the holy cows of academia are. And they struggle and sometimes they fall in the first semester. And so we have an interdisciplinary or cross-campus course talking about what is the holy grail of academics, where should you not put your foot down, and you know, where can you, just to avoid some of these you know, kind of incidents that we all know in first semester, freshmen coming in and they don't know exactly what is expected of them within an academic world. So those, that again was also voted in. Again, I will offer that then in the fall for our incoming students. So as you can see, the faculty was very generous in allowing me to do all these things. And I'm really excited about it. Uh, February 27th, uh, we had then the workshop. Uh, again, thank you very much, Liz. And Grace, for having that up at West. I think we had a very good turnout. We had 63 people in the room. And we did that together. We have a center for teaching excellence at, on campus that organizes Pretty much two times a month on Thursdays, we have the lunch hours open. There are no classes taught from 12.30 to 2 o'clock, and that's fixed on the university calendar for CTE courses. And so we work together with CTE in this workshop, and it was very well attended, and uh, again, brought up some support for the course that I want to teach them. The, 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 the. And again, uh, in May 2017, we will be down in Fort Lewis, uh, presenting some uh, small pilot study that we did at the end of the competition because we want to know what does the competition do to our students. So we did a very small pilot study, open-ended question, uh, no generalization, but rather the need for this kind of exit interview. See what was the impact of that competition on our students, their perception of ethics, how important is our ethics, did they change their perceptions or not, and will be a colleague of mine, Jeff Dykes, uh, who you know, who also came up here for the competition, will be going down and presenting that at Kaori's uh, conference. Just a little background on headquarters. It's a, it's a mandatory course for freshmen when they come in since 2012. To be honest, uh, it was a political decision too, was for retention. We found that we had to engage the student differently in other ways to uh, retain them from the first to the second year. Gunnison is not an easy place to be. It's definitely a destination school. There is nothing else. So everybody who goes to Gunnison is pretty much from somewhere else. There's nobody, who, well, there are a couple of kids from Gunnison, from Crested Butte, but there's no much support locally. So we found that uh, we need to strengthen our first to second year retention. We found this kind of a freshman extra course, one credit, would be uh, possible to, to do that. And we have increased uh, retention into the high 7% range, which is a really good one for us uh, in, in guns. Wide range of courses, again, uh, the school does not prescribe what faculty members teach, but uh, these are faculty members invited who normally score very well on the student evaluations, uh, like to work with students. I mean, you don't want to get anybody who doesn't want to work with the students in these, but rather these are uh, people invited. And again, the topic is whatever, but it's the beginning of something. Okay? Whether it's uh, geology or geography or history, if the professor from those fields, they can frame the topic any way they want, but it has to do with the beginning. And the students sign up for the K course by interest. And I like teaching them because you have majors from all disciplines. It's not just business majors who are in my courses, but you have people from pre-med, you have people from uh, history, you have people from philosophy, and I find that to be interesting because they bring different perspectives uh, to the class. Later on, they will be anyway in business classes or in history classes, so uh, I think that's a very good concept. 
And then the first few experience, the oversight is the first you send our council that I said, those are the ones where you propose your course, they vote on it, and again, the critical squad. Academic pitfalls, uh, we do it as from the uh, School of Business. Uh, I will be teaching it or facilitating it. I really don't think of myself as a teacher in that class, but rather a facilitator. And uh, we have capped enrollment in these courses at 20. That's the maximum. Uh, we feel otherwise, if it's too large of a class, you don't have much engagement. It's really hard to get to know the students. So uh, the enrollment is maximum 20 for these freshman courses again for the purpose of engagement. And what I've done is I have, again that's why I feel more a facilitator rather than a teacher, I felt well ethics pitfalls can happen in all different areas on campus and so I've thought support and have received support from the different academic and student uh, service uh, offices on campus to come in and talk about very specific topics where they see ethics behavioral issues, you know, how do you uh, show moral behavior. So I have somebody from Academic Resource Center talk about what kind of sources are available if you have issues. The Career Center, we found that students sometimes are pretty generous in writing down what they can or cannot do on a resume. And to, to go through writing a resume as a freshman to get their first draft, so they have to write and talk about you know, one of the essays, uh, one of my stories, I place all our students at the President Wilson Hotel in Geneva, Switzerland, and the students, to please the French, would say, I speak French. And the first thing they do is Madame Kiki, and this is not a made up name, I mean, the HR director is Madame Kiki. The first thing is, oh, you speak French, and he wish he would switch into French. And the interview online by Edward Sky would go on in French, and the students would struggle right there. And she said, well, but you wrote on your resume that you can speak French. And so that's where we came from. So, like, you know, really be careful what you put on your resume that you can also back up with your competence and your skill. Office of the Registrar, Academic Honesty. Our students have very little understanding of the probation process. You know, what is acceptable, they plagiarize, they you get on probation. What is the process? What are your up to, uh, you know? Uh, what are your rights and obligations? But just to talk about, you know, what is the ethical behavior from an academic standpoint? Then the writing center, obviously, uh, you know that I sometimes find myself being more policeman, uh, trying to chase down whether the students referenced and quoted properly. I mean, I'm an old-fashioned person. I've been editor for magazines, and I'm so constantly. And sometimes I'm tired of doing this. So I have the writing center and the library come in and we do a big seminar on properly quoting reference. I mean, you know the story uh, in, in that area. Then I have the lead, uh, the, the lead office. Uh, what we're trying to do is have the students' ethical behavior is service, in our opinion. So the students have to s sign up for a service project with a not-for-profit in the valley. So they have to go to the senior home they can go to the, uh, the kennel, uh, to the dog rescues kennel. They can, uh, I had people, my students work with Habitat for Humanity building a home uh, in the fall. So going out on the Saturday helping constructing a, a house for underprivileged people. So that's what we do with the lead and see, you know, what is ethical behavior. But it's also kind of service oriented. And then student services, disciplinary pitfalls. You know, students sometimes uh, do, stu uh, do stupid things. I mean, we all were young, we did the same. And so I have student services also coming. So as you can see, I do not see myself as a teacher in this course, but rather bring in all these different resources and expose the students to all these, what I call, the pitfalls of academic life, coming as a freshman from high school. Some students do very well with this, uh, so I, but also some students can use some reminders and. Uh, anyway, so that was the proof that I will start teaching this in, uh, in the fall. I have all the commitment, you know, from all the way from the registrar herself. She wants to do it herself and, and get involved. Normally it's delegated to somebody, but uh, I have the uh, vice president for student services. He wants to get involved himself. So uh, there seems to be quite an excitement of uh, this topic to be covered for our income. <coughs>
Any questions on this? Or, anyway, so that's, yes. How do you, since you're bringing people in as speakers from their own areas, how do you integrate it and get the whole ethics underlying? Well, that's what we do in the first, first couple of uh, sessions that we have with the students. We talk about basic ethics, basic behavior, and it's just to get the students, you know, not just for academics, but in general, you know, what are ethics. And then keep drawing that out as you go through. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, and again, we try not to be too academic in these headwaters courses anyway, because they do that when they go into their majors in their fields. Uh, this really is trying to engage the students, get, get their interest, you know, point out some some issues, and that's really what we're trying to do. Yeah. So I don't want them to be ethics experts at the end of this course. It's too short anyway. We meet 15 hours as one credit. Uh, a whole bunch of uh, time goes for the service uh, project. There will be five hours for that. So it's 10 hours that we have. Is this an elective, Michael? No, it's uh, required. You have to, yeah, have to require. So one our required course as a freshman. But they can choose whatever. They can sign up. All the courses are in the course catalog describing mm -hmm. what is offered. And then the students sign up for that. Yes. Um, how much do you have in terms of online behavior? I like that suggestion. I don't have anything. I haven't even thought about it. But I'll see what I can do. That. Thank you. Do you send me the bill for a good suggestion? <laughs> No, I think that's 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 huge. Okay. No, thank you very much. I did not. And sometimes we sit in our cubicles and and when we work and the most obvious things. Thank you. I appreciate that. So this would bring in the entire e-learning department. Yeah. Well, um, probably also some of the IT people and our computer science. We have a a new professor for cybersecurity from uh, Patty and Ellen that we just hired, and so. That might be a person to come into communications to yeah, even even philosophy. Yeah. Are you talking about dialogue and behavior inside of online environments? Was that the suggestion? Oh well, I, I think it covers how it's gamut. Right? Yeah. I mean, there's there's um, uh, anything from chat room behavior to plagiarism uh, to password security um, and uh, <coughs> exposure. Um, what you put out there? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mommy, mommy. Social, social media. Yeah. Social, uh, yeah, I mean, and social media for that matter. Yeah. Right. Um, Pretending yeah. to be someone else. <clears throat> that too. Right. And also, you know, universities with the pirating, you know, downloading yeah. movies and videos. That's yeah. like a. <laughs> There's so so much stuff. So There's so good much stuff. Thank yeah. you. Yeah. So I will add that for the next presentation to check. <laughs> I mean, I still have time. <laughs> We're going to your course just to make sure. <laughs> and again, the February uh, workshop we had really made people aware. So the support has been extremely uh, strong on campus. I mean, so when I ask people, this is what I would like to do. You know, you know how people are. We are very busy with our own stuff, but mm -hmm. people were willing to jump in. Anyway, so. Uh, the honors course, the 397, the other one that we start then in the fall as part of our um, ethics involvement, one full FT, I mentioned that before, I will teach it, and uh, as the faculty and the president suggested and confirmed, is it's supposed to be interdisciplinary, so not just a business course in ethics, but rather uh, bringing ethics across Honors classes tend to be small. We choose that as a starting point. Uh, honors, uh, I don't know how here, but you get a selective group of students. Uh, they normally pretty engaging, very critical. So we found that that might be a good group to start with. And it's interdisciplinary. And then also, they tend to be open to experiments. I mean, these are your brightest students, your engaging students. And they have no problems getting back to you with suggestions, improvements, and so on. So we thought that having this uh, for its first and the students voted for it to start then in folks. And the way that it's designed is based on giving voice to values by Mary Gentile. That's the book. Uh, uh, again, it was influenced here. And that was one of the free uh, books that was in my package when I was here. And, and it really influenced me. And I thought, well, this would be a good base for this ethics course. 
And the way that we have structured this 15-week credit tree course in three parts, the first part is an introduction to uh, ethics in general. I'd like to set the framework. I mean, this is more of an academic course, so we want the students to understand. And then also the reading for the course will be giving voice to values. That's a required text that the students have to read in addition to other materials, but that's the foundation. And we'll go in the first part to the seven pillars of that work and go through all these different parts. There's an interesting uh, YouTube program that has a different program, so we want to use that as a base to get the ethics discussion going. The second part, I'm very excited about it, uh, faculty from all different disciplines on campus will come into class and present an article, a video, available to class prior to the class meeting about an ethical case issue in their field. Uh, I found very often when we first talked about people say, oh yeah, it's a business problem. And then we went through a Wall Street Journal one day and we found eight, eight uh, ethics issues and they were not all related to business. And so uh, we found that it would be really good to have these different people. I'll talk to people in the art department. So, oh yeah, great. I have a lot of examples. I can bring a case. Uh, people in music, you know, when you never thought like, oh, they have ethical issues. Oh, well, yes, they have a lot of the copyright issues, licensing fees, and it goes on. So anyway, so the second part of this uh, semester will be these faculty presentations. They will make an article, a case, a video available to the students, and they will have a short presentation, and then really have uh, an engaged discussion with the students to discuss that case, to discuss that presentation. So the focus, again, more of student interaction, not to have an hour faculty presentation, but rather have the materials up front, highlight, compare and contrast a little bit at the beginning, and then discuss with the students. And then the third part I'm very excited about is that the students have reserved November 29th as an ethics forum. So we'll try to get a keynote speaker right now. Uh, Western is very close to Dell computers, so we try to get the CEO of Dell to come up and uh, speak from an organizational standpoint what the challenges are. And then the students have to organize a panel of ethics experts to come in and have presentations, uh, a, a panel discussion, a round table. I leave it up to the students, but they have to. Obviously, we start in the first week because you cannot pull this out in <laughs> the last four weeks. But the focus and, and class time will be dedicated to really get this set up. They have to arrange the catering. They have to arrange for how to set this up. And obviously, the invitations have to start. We started right in August when we started. But it, the students, I want the students focus. What do they think is important? I'm going to try to make some of the connections, but I let the students then handle this ethics forum, set it up, and it's supposed to be a campus-wide event for which we have then reserved the University Center where we had our event as well in, in February. But I'm really excited about that uh, for, for the students to, I hope that they pick it up and, and, and have fun organizing an event of that kind of magnitude. So anyway, that's the course that we're going to see. And this is just a list of people who have uh, already said they would be involved in that class from the faculty. As you can see, it goes from accounting, art, to school of business, philosophy, natural science, pre-med, exercise and sports science. So really try to get a cross section from campus to come in and deliver these workshops and presentations to the students. So again, that the students get is yes, ethics is not just an issue with one department or one school. And that's really what we are planning starting in August. Any questions? So if you have any great ideas, we've had one great one, you can put it on this piece of paper for Michael and we will collect them and send them to you. Took, I have already one. You took them all. You took them all. <laughs> <laughs> As, congratulations, to Michael. That is quite yeah, impressive. Yeah, that is very good. Very so, I, I am just astounded by the buy-in, yeah, yeah. yeah. which yeah. I imagine would be different across yeah. different colleges. In my college, I had a hard time getting faculty to respond to my email, no less <laughs> buying <laughs> into an event. I mean, this is, I am, I am. So have Michael come out. Yeah, right? 
No, I don't think a lot. I mean, we're talking a transient uh, community Children college to. versus um, a place which is uh, almost an enclave yeah, it's of, a resident of, of, of thought leaders. So there is a very different environment going on here. But wow, you, you've given me an incredible food for thought to continue to you know keep punching and, and impress upon those who are, have been departmentalized mm -hmm. that this is for them. So thank you very much. Yeah, thank you. So is the honors honors course, I know it's a college of business, it's in business school, but is it just for business majors? No, no, that's why I say it's from all it disciplines. Across, okay. Yeah, it's all every, I mean, you have the that's GPA great. requirements and so on. And again, uh, we see this as a pilot class and to see how it's perceived and uh, let, let's put it this way, there's a little bias here, obviously, that normally honors students are more involved, engaged, and we hope that we get this kind of feedback and to make it a permanent course yeah. on campus. I don't know whether it will be continuously housed in honors or it will be moved, but the idea to have it interdisciplinary, that has to stay. Okay, that's the, and then probably the faculty members who participate in the fall, probably colleagues. Again, the other colleagues who say, yeah, I can, I'm happy to do it, I just cannot do it in the fall. Uh, but contact me again in the spring, and then I will take the philosophy section or work or something. Well, they'll probably encourage other other students to take the course in the spring. Yes. So, what is the nature of the the setting of the learning objectives, and how frequently do you do assessment, and what's the nature of the assessment? Okay. The uh, there will be two <coughs> exams major assessments in class throughout the semester, and they will finish with the last case presentation. So all the materials that were presented by all the faculty members is open in these two assessments. So they will do, we go back to the first session where they have the basic introduction to ethics. We're looking at giving voice to values, the foundation for the course. And then they have two uh, narrative uh, uh, major assessments in the course, and then the other one will be based on the event that they have to put together. Is so they have like a pre-production, an operational plan, and then a post-event discussion, how did the event go, what went wrong, da da da. So they have to reflect uh, through that whole process. So is it, so it's, going, it's, not, it's combination written and oral? That the nature of the the mostly written on the two in class assessments, and then obviously with the project, it, it is everything. I mean, it's, uh, it's written oral. Uh, there's also some basic organizational skills part of that. So it will be really a cumulative type of assessment. I have not really uh, yet, let's uh, see how exactly I will put the, the grading together for these assessments, the criteria, but that's the the basic foundation that the objective is to have a successful event and then probably have also group meetings where the students have to discuss each and everybody's contribution to the process so that they you know see what did everybody contribute. I think that um, getting faculty engaged alone was difficult and, and I commend you for that. Um, what about the students? You said that the students voted on the honors class. They did the case competition. Are they? F you, do you see any ad additional interest in in ethics issues? Well, just, just by the fact that I mean, again, they have a whole mm -hmm. bunch of different courses that they right. can vote from, and that they voted it in. Nobody told them that they had to mm -hmm. take an ethics course as part of their curriculum. I think speaks for that there is an interest, that there is an awareness that it is an important topic. And again, there's a little bias because these are, you know, you take honor students, they have, they're more driven, they have this kind of, okay. uh, and hopefully once we successfully run the pilot and we roll it out, that we have the support in the general student body right. uh, to that degree as well. I love the idea that the students are taking the initiative to plan ahead 15 weeks later so that there's a deliverable at the end and they can see exactly what they're working towards. My question is whether there's a reluctance
to go out and engage with those on the campus that are going to help them pull off this event. This is not something that students do on a regular basis. They, they, they interact with faculty, but now you're asking Michael to go out and talk to, uh, almost as event planners, you're asking them to go out to talk to other faculty, almost as equals, as opposed to, a, you know, we have a lot to learn from you. So it's a totally different skill set. Um, how do they handle that? Uh, well, <laughs> I hope they do pretty well. I mean, again, it's, it's a little bit of this bias to have the honor students. I mean, they tend to be more engaging, outgoing. Uh, we have very active, I mean, there's a lot of research going on between faculty and students. A lot of those students are honor students. They, they publish together with the faculty. So they have that level of engagement with the faculty. I mean, let's face it, we are a small campus and open door policy is really lived every day. I mean, students do not have any hesitation to, Very to cool. come in because like, you sit together on the ski lift or sure. that same person is uh, uh, serving you a meal on, on the weekend, you know, I mean, when you go out. I mean, it's, it's part of that, as you said, residential setting, small town, uh, there is very little, I mean, there's students that you don't see, I mean, let's face it, but uh, on average, the students are very open to come to your office to just stop in, talk to you. I found that to be one of the refreshing parts, actually, at Western, that there is very little barrier between. I noticed, students. too, that the outdoor student, I was at Colorado Mountain College in the Leadville campus, especially, um, they have a big outdoor program. Those students are incredibly entrepreneurial in how they go about their lives. Mm -hmm. And so, yeah, it's refreshing to hear, and I imagine Gutterson would be the same way, so you can draw off from that population, naturally. Yeah. That's great. Yeah, they know me very, and let's face it, I mean, there's nothing else to do in Gunnison. So if they don't create it, if they don't do it, it's, it's boring. I mean, there's no shopping, there's no movie, you know, and so they have to be engaging. Them. Tough life. <laughs> the thing I just saw, yeah, but I saw that somewhere that Western has one of the highest percentage of students going into self-employment. Mm -hmm. It has almost that kind of anti-corporate feeling where the students feel like, no, no, I don't want to be bound into an organization. I want to do whatever.